Western Union small boats, in a sense, it is an expedition which is in reverse. It's uh, people coming from Africa and North Africa to Europe, to Sicily, to the Mediterranean. And really, it's about journeys which are sort of unfinished journeys. And essentially, just kind of tracking back, as it were, into Europe. Um, we come to Sicily, and specifically for me, it's also a meditation on Visconti's Leopard, um, which was shot in Sicily, in Palermo, and what I've done in this work is to mime all the various locations where Visconti shot the leopard and to, in a way, give them a sort of update. So, of course, Visconti's film is really about the sort of aristocratic classes, in a way, being taken over by the bourgeoisie and, in a way, the way in which Sicily loses its kingdom and becomes part of Italy in this kind of unification. And I guess you could say, if we think about these questions today, then there is this very, if you like, ambivalent position that Sicily, and specifically Lampedusa, an island off Sicily, occupies as being the sort of closest island to Africa in Europe, where they have many um, clandestine um, people trying to get into Europe. And it's also, of course, the area where there's lots of crossings, where people in small, small boats are trying to get into Europe. And, uh, of course, it, it is a huge problem. In Western Union Small Boats, what I'm trying to do is to make a piece of work which looks at this kind of question and explores that as a sort of area for thinking about the ways in which we might imagine these journeys taking place. And also, I utilize choreography and dance as a way of rearticulating those journeys and expressing those within um, the space of architecture and location. And it's a work which is very much sort of the last work in, in this trilogy of expedition works. Well, I think one of the main sort of themes around Western Union small boats is that there's a question which I'm posing, which is really, where is Europe? And I think a place like Sicily, and particularly islands like Lampedusa, because of their proximity to North Africa, obviously there's been a long, porous history between sort of Africa and Europe in these locations. And if we look at the buildings architecturally, if we look at the food, even parts of the language, this is a kind of very obvious aspect. And I always remember, very ironically, when I was shooting the piece of work, there were young Sicilians who were working with me in the film crew, and they had T-shirts on which had the island of Sicily, and the kind of graphic on it was North Africa. And I thought this was very ironic, because it seemed to me there was a sort of consciousness, um, at least among the kind of people that we were working with, that sort of Sicily is seen as this kind of other part of Europe. So I think there's that question, and that question's being posed also in the way in which I'm working with the actual filming. A lot of Western Union small boats is a meditation of, on Visconti's Leopard, and in that sense, it's really a piece of work which is trying to look at the history of cinema and through looking at the history of cinema, trying to relocate some fundamental questions, which I think Visconti was trying to present at the particular time when he made The Leopard. And so I think today, if we're going to make a film in Sicily or if we're going to make a film in Europe, it's quite beholden, really, I think, to artists if you're going to do with this subject and it'd be quite difficult to shy away from this question of um, movements, the movements of people. It seems to me that one of the things that we celebrate in the telecommunications revolution that we cohabit is really the question of m movement and the freedom that that sort of offers for information and in turn for goods. But of course, one of the things which doesn't sort of transfer in quite the same way as we, really the movement of peoples. And uh, I think, of course, now in Fortress Europe, we have this kind of attitude towards people 
who may want to come in for work, who may want to seek a better life for themselves as a kind of anomaly or something that shouldn't occur, but of course does. And I think one of the things, obviously, that this leads to is this kind of surplus of movement towards directions to spaces that have capital, that have um, a certain power. And, of, uh, and I think that is attractive, obviously, to various populations of people who are, in fact, in quite close proximity to um, these spaces quite often. So that was another theme. I think one of the other aspects I'm trying to bring about in a piece like Western Union Small Birds is also thinking about the question of architecture and the question of painting, of history painting. And I'm thinking of um, that very famous sort of French painting, um, which I saw in the Louvre the other day, the Raphael and the Medusa, I think it's called, where you have this amazing um, painting of people who are kind of, you know, on this raft, and it's su such an important painting. And I'm thinking about sort of artists reflecting on this question of um, movement and journeying. And of course, this is also, you know, in Turner as well. It's in many kind of um, sort of 18th century, 19th century um, sort of Renaissance period works. And so, in a way, it, it, there is a kind of tradition of thinking about these questions and posing them in, in a fine art sort of genre. And so with this work, of course, the difference, of course, it's presented in three screens, sometimes five screens, dep depending on which installation of Western Union Small Boats is being shown. But certainly, there is this sort of approach to thinking about color, to thinking about um, texture and lighting and all of these concerns which are also very much part of its presentation when making the work. Well, how I tend to work when I'm making works like Western Union Small Boats or True North or Phantom Afrique is that we, when we come to the post-production stage of editing, we work with a computer program which enables us to see the screens simultaneously. And so we're editing with what I call this parallel montage technique where we're sort of looking at the images simultaneously as we edit. Right. And then we are able to make decisions on the basis of that after working over a number of weeks. So I would say that sort of halfway through the process, we get what we've edited and then we actually install the work in situ to where we're editing large scale, um, as large scale to how we want to present the work as possible, and then basically invite an audience to experience the work, and then we make another set of editing decisions from then. And we keep doing that, actually, until we're very near to finishing the piece. And so we're seeing how the work works, not only in terms of the images, but also how it's working in terms of sound. Well, I think one of the things about Western Union Small Boats is that it's a work which is um, being shot on the film, but it's also a work which is a multi-screen work. And I first started making works in an art context, really from the point of view of someone who actually had made films. That said, however, I did study painting at St. Martin School of Art and I graduated sort of specialising in film. So I've always had this very close proximity to the art world in my work. But I think one of the reasons for me making work in a gallery context is that for me, I want to differentiate between why I make films and why I would make gallery installation works. And so one of the things that you can explore in the gallery scenario is really the way in which through projection, through technology, that you're able to project an image and you're also able to, through the kind of technological communications revolution that we've experienced, 
have simultaneous um, projections. And so that's been the thing that's been exciting to me because it's been a way of thinking about expanded cinema or thinking about a more architectural approach to making images. And that's something that you can't do in the kind of more um, traditional cinema viewing um, sort of experience that we have when we go to watch films. And also I think one of the things that happens is that when we go to the cinema, we think we're going to be entertained in some particular way or other. And one of the things that we do when we go to a gallery is that we know that we're going to, in some instance, be challenged or we're going to be questioned or we're going to look at something which is going to be unusual. And so I think it's that sort of experience of the sort of gallery context allowing for that exploration that was very important and also in a way gave me the sort of indication to kind of work with this idea of working with multi-screens.